So going into season seven, talk about powertrains is absolutely rife. And the team's decisions whether to use a new powertrain, bringing that into season seven, or stick with an existing model. Now, if you don't know what's going on, what's new, what hasn't changed, let me bring you up to speed. Earlier in the year, new championship cost-saving regulations were voted in as a result of the global health crisis. The teams were given three options. They could continue with their 2019-20 powertrain, that's the components that convert the energy from the battery to motion and make the car move, bring in an all new setup to be retained for two years or carry over their existing powertrain for the start of the campaign before switching to a new package later in the season. So who's doing what? Well, let's start with the teams that brought new powertrains to pre-season testing in Valencia. Eldisport Ab Schaefer have kitted out their e-tron FE07 with a new powertrain, which will be used by both the manufacturer outfit and the customer team in Vision Virgin Racing. There's a lot of verification of all the things that you've been doing with your newly homologated car uh, before you go into Season 7 and now as well Season 8. This is a new MGU for us, new motor generator unit, which is completely built in-house in Audi. As always, it's a step in the right direction um, on weight, efficiency, um, and these are the main criteria. We are hopeful that it's going to be very competitive and then, you know, as usual, the, the pairing of the car, the drivers, the team, that's what will make a difference. Also sporting new kit are Jaguar Racing, BMW i Andretti Motorsport, Mahindra Racing, Neo 333, Mercedes-Benz EQ, and the Tag Heuer Porsche Formula E team. DS to Cheetah have opted for the third option, using the same powertrain from the teams and driver championship winning car, with the plan to move to an updated car and powertrain later in the season. The software is a really big part of Formula E and that doesn't stop, so we've continued developing the software side, it's still a race car at the end of the day. There's so many other elements other than the powertrain, but you know I think it'll, it's the right choice to, to bring it in Rome and um, that'll be another step during the season, so something for the drivers to look forward to. The team have been developing their two cars simultaneously, a slightly upgraded version of the Season 6 car that was on show at testing, and their E10's FE21 car with a new powertrain that'll come into play in April. The main reason for that is just, you know, we're going to have to use the, those new cars once they're homologated for Season 7 and 8, and we wanted to make sure if we're going to use them for that long that we have the best package possible, not only in performance, but also reliability. Nissan Edams and Dragon Penske Autosport are doing the same, starting with their existing powertrain and updating later in the season. With Envision Virgin Racing running the new Audi powertrain and Rocket Venturi running the new Mercedes-Benz EQ powertrain, software and a handful of other parts, you may be asking why a manufacturer team would give up a potential competitive advantage by allowing a customer team to use their most up-to-date software and hardware in a championship where teams are only permitted to customise a handful of parts on their cars? Well, the answer is simple. They have to. Within the Formula E rules and regulations, manufacturers that supply powertrains for customer teams have to provide them with the most up-to-date version, with the aim to keep the racing as competitive as possible and limit big manufacturer advantage. Formula E is as much of a software and data race as it is a race on track. Using racing, the teams develop the future of road cars. And although not explicitly confirmed, having two teams running the same powertrain and software in different scenarios could give manufacturer teams like Audi and Mercedes-Benz EQ double the data and learnings. Formula E teams and manufacturers have reached new levels of powertrain tech, and the efficiency data is remarkable, with the upcoming season's powertrains achieving up to 97% efficiency, meaning 97% of the energy produced from the battery is used to make the car move. For those that like to compare Formula E with other motorsports and car types, Here's an example of why those numbers are so impressive. The most thermally efficient internal combustion engine powered championship race car in the world right now is the Formula One championship winning 2020 Mercedes, which achieves around 50% efficiency, meaning half of the energy produced by the engine and combustion of fuel to power the car goes to waste by the car's heat and exhaust emissions. In a world with diminishing resources, efficiency is everything and the powertrain developments made thanks to Formula E teams are going to continue to revolutionize the cars we drive on the road.